Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Repeat Grid in Adobe Illustrator. I'll show you first how to make each of the grids that are on my artboard, and then I'll show you how to put a collection of different designs together in a grid to create a pattern. I'll move into a different document, select this rectangle, then I'll go up to Object, down to repeat and I have three choices to make radial grid or mirror these are three new features which were added with the release of Illustrator 25.1 and they're all worth getting to know in my last video I showed how to use the radial repeat and in a future video I'll be showing how to do the mirror repeat right now I'll go ahead and choose grid and Illustrator places a grid of eight objects on my artboard. I can make a lot of different changes to this grid. To start out with, if I want to change the number of columns, I grab the handle on the right and drag it to the left to reduce the number of columns, and I drag it to the right to increase the number of columns. If I want to change the number of rows, I drag up to reduce the number of rows, and I drag down to increase the number of rows. If I need more objects in the grid, than my artboard allows, I can either increase the size of the artboard or I can scale down the size of the grid and then come over and add more columns and add more rows. In addition to adding rows and columns, I can also adjust the spacing in between each of these. Now, if I want to change the horizontal spacing, I come up to this top slider and I drag to the left to decrease the space in between the columns and I drag to the right to increase the space between the columns. If I want to change the space between the rows, I come to the left slider and I drag up to decrease the spacing and I drag down to increase the spacing. And I actually have even more control over the spacing when I come over to the properties panel in the repeat options area. This first bin controls the horizontal spacing and the second bin controls the vertical spacing. So if I want a specific space in between the columns, I'm going to highlight here and I'll type in 0.125 and then press the return key. I'm going to do the same thing for the vertical spacing. I'll highlight this value and type in 0.125 and press enter. Next, I can choose the grid type. Illustrator offers me three different choices. The first one is the default, and that's where the rows and the columns are all lined up. The second choice is brick by row. So I click on the second icon, and we have a traditional brick look. The third icon, when I click on it, gives me brick by column. And this is a nice choice for some shapes, but for the rectangle, I'm going to go back to the brick by row. Below the grid type, you'll see flip row and flip column. And if I click on any of these icons, you're not going to notice a change because the object in my grid is symmetrical. I need to make a grid out of a different shape so I can show you how these work. I'm going to choose this heart, go up to Object, down to Repeat, and choose Grid. And then let's increase the number of columns and the number of rows. And I'm going to select brick by row, and then we'll try this first icon. This is flip horizontal row, and there's no change there, so I'll deselect that, and we'll try the flip vertical, and we see a change there, so you see what happens here. I'll leave that and come over to flip column, and first I'll try the flip horizontal, no change there, so I'll deselect it, and then I'll click on flip vertical, and that gives us a nice design. Everything's evenly spaced. I'm going to leave it like that. In addition to being able to change the kind of grid and the rows and the columns and all the spacing, you can also change the original object as well. And when we change one object in this grid, Illustrator is going to change all of the objects at the same time. Now, if the object happens to be a solid color, we can change the color fill on the stroke right here. I'll just come up to the color fill icon, click on it, and I'll change this to a pink color. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the stroke to two points, and we'll leave it at that. But if I have an object in my grid that has multiple colors, this isn't going to work. So I'm going to move over to another document, and 
we'll grab my pumpkin here and I'll make a grid out of it. I'll come down to repeat and choose grid. Then I'll add some columns and some rows. And the way I change color here is going to have to be different. To change just a part of the design, I need to double click on one of the objects. It doesn't matter which one. And that moves me into the grid repeat isolation mode. You can tell you're in the mode because now you can see this gray bar which goes across the top of the artboard. Now with this selected, I'm going to come to the Layers panel. First of all, Illustrator tells me you're in isolation mode. And then if I twirl down here, and I actually need to twirl down one more time, I see all of the various components of this one object. Now right now they're all selected. You see the lines around all of them, and over here on the Layers panel, you see these little red squares. To change the background of the pumpkin color without changing the leaves and the stem, I'm going to have to isolate this background color. So I'll click on this little ball, and now the only thing that is selected is the background color. There's not a little box next to all the rest of these objects. So with the background color selected, I come back to the Properties panel, click on the Color Fill icon, choose this darker orange color, and the color is applied to this particular object and all of the pumpkins in the grid. And we can go back to the Layers panel, and we even see the color here in the Layers panel. So I'm able to change the color. I can remove something. I'll come up and select the stem. And now you see the red line around the stem. And you see this little block here to show me that the stem is selected. And if I want to get rid of the stem, I'm going to press the Delete key. Now the stem is gone from my selected object and all of the pumpkins on the grid. I want to keep the stem, so I'm going to undo that move, keyboard shortcut, command Z. Just wanted you to see that you could do that. Then I can also add something. I'm going to deselect my stem and get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut N, and we're going to draw out the word fall. And you see that as I draw these letters, they're added to every one of the objects all across my grid. So there are a lot of different things that you're able to do. I can rotate the object, and I want to not only rotate the pumpkin, I want to rotate the word fall. So I'll click all the way at the top in the Layers panel, and that's going to select everything again. And then I'll get the Rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and just slightly drag to the left, and get the Selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect it, and now all the pumpkins are leaning to the left. Well, let's undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z. And then I want to resize just the pumpkin, so I'll come back over to the Layers panel, and I'm going to click on the Pumpkin Only. I don't want to reduce the word Fall. And then I'll grab a handle, I'm going to hold the Shift key down so that I scale this in proportion, and I'll just drag down, and as I drag, you see that the pumpkin is getting smaller across the whole grid. The word fall is remaining the same. Well, I'm going to go ahead and undo that move, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and I want to exit the grid repeat isolation mode. I can do that in one of two ways. I can either click a couple of times on this left arrow, or I can simply double click on the artboard, and I'm back to a regular view. Now I'll select my grid and open the Properties panel, and I am going to make one change. I want this to be brick by row, and I think that's going to look a little better. Now I want to show you how to take multiple objects and place them together in a grid to create a pattern. I'll move to another document where I have a collection of floral designs. We're going to turn these into a grid, so I'll select them and move them into the top left corner of my artboard, and then come up to Object, down to Repeat, and choose Grid. And I end up with a grid that's much larger than my artboard, so I'm going to reduce the view for a moment so I can get a handle on this. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command minus, and I'll press Command minus again, and Command minus one more time. I'm going to adjust the spacing of the grid and get it lined up with the artboard. And then I'll remove some columns and remove some rows. 
And to get back to the full size of my artboard, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command-0. Now I'll work on the spacing. First, I want to reduce the space in between my rows, and so I'll come to the left side and drag the slider up, and it's okay if my objects are overlapping a little bit. Next, we're going to adjust the size between our columns. So I'm going to come to the top slider and drag it to the left. Next, I'm going to check out the grid types and see if I like one better than the other. First, I'll try the brick by row, and then I'm going to try the brick by column. I like the brick by row better. I'll go back and click on that one. Then I want to study the design and see if there are any of the floral pieces that are overlapping enough that I think they need to be moved. If I find something, we're going to have to move back into the isolation mode. I'm looking at this branch up here that overlaps this leaf. I am going to move this. I'll double click it to move into the grid repeat isolation mode and come over to the layers panel and twirl down here and I see that everything in that grid group is selected. Well, I don't want to move it all, so I'll double click the branch again and then click it one more time to select it. Now when I look over in the layers panel, I see it's the only thing selected, so I can come over and begin to move it. Now, I'll just nudge it around a little bit until I feel like I have better spacing on it, and then I may even try to rotate it. Let's just slide it around a little bit and then move it back up, and that looks much better. I'm also going to move this leaf here. I'll select it. And then I need to double click it to move into the isolation mode and double click it again so it's the only one selected. And I can move it away from these other leaves as well. Then when I'm finished adjusting the spacing of the objects, I'll double click outside of the grid to exit that isolation mode. We end up with a really nice pattern here, but I don't want you to confuse this with making a seamless pattern swatch, which is a lot more complicated to make, and it has a lot of different benefits. But if you want to learn how to make seamless pattern swatches, at the end of this video, I'll link one of my tutorials which shows you how to do that. But for many of your purposes, this pattern may serve just fine. Now when I'm completely finished with a design, I move it out of the grid mode so that it works a little easier in my illustration. I'll go back to the brick grid to demonstrate this. I have the brick design the way I want it, so I'll select the grid, come up to Object, and I'm going to choose Expand. Now Object and Fill are checked. I'm going to say OK, and I've moved out of that grid mode now. I don't have sliders, I don't have the handles, so I can't add columns or rows, and I can't adjust the spacing in between the rows. I'm also going to run into trouble if I want to change the color of my fills here. If I come over to the Properties panel and click on a color, well, the entire design is changed, and that's not what I want. So I'll click to close the Swatches panel, and then undo that, Keyboard Shortcut, Command-Z. There are also some tools that don't work when your grid is only expanded, so I take it a step further. I'll go to the Properties panel in the Pathfinder area and click on the ellipsis and choose the third icon from the left, which is Merge, and then click away from that to close out those options. The thing you need to know, though, about using Merge is that it's going to remove your stroke. It's really not a problem. I'll select our design, come over to the Properties panel, and we'll just add that back in. And this works unless you have your objects right next to each other, and then it becomes a problem. Now I have total and complete control over all of my objects. I can select the entire group and ungroup it, keyboard shortcut shift command G, and then I can click away and come over and just choose one object, or I can choose all of the objects, come back over, and make a color change. And having the design broken down like this is going to be much more useful as I work in my projects. I want to show you one last thing, and I'm going to move into the pumpkin grid to do that. If you decide that you want to completely back away from the grid and get back to the original object you started with, then all you do is select your grid, come up to Object, go down to Repeat, and choose Release. Here I have the pumpkin that I started with, plus the addition of the word fall. 
Well, we've covered a lot in this video, and I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use that mirror repeat. And I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss that or any of my future tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.